people with jobs that require you to go into strangers' houses. What is the weirdest thing you've encountered? Not me, but my dad who can tell the story much better than I can. He was once repairing a furnace in the basement of one of his client's homes. Nobody was home when suddenly heard a scurrying behind him, but when he looked, nothing was there. This went on several times before he realized the noise was coming from behind a couch. Slowly, he began towards it. As he bent down, a skunk popped out from its hiding spot and met him face to face. Turns out he was a pet, but apparently it really spooked him at the time. So this was back when I was a student on a placement in community mental health services. I went out to visit to see a man who was just recently discharged from a medium secure hospital. He had schizophrenia, psychosis. We were going in for a routine checkup. I knock, he opens the door, and this incredible stench just hits us in the face, and I thought I was going to throw up right there. But alas, my supervisor urges me to go in. We walk into his house, and it just smells so bad. My eyes were watering. I keep my composure, we chat to him, and I notice some black thing on his kitchen table. Looks like rotting food, mold, tiny dead mouse, I don't know. So after chatting, I casually ask him what the black thing is and if he needs help cleaning it. Oh, it's my toes. What. The. Fuck. Yeah, I cut them off. They didn't fit right on my foot. Needless to say, he was immediately readmitted. He reportedly cut them off with a kitchen knife and then seared his wound with a lighter. I believe he had to have his entire foot below the knee or leg amputated because it got infected. A neighbor called the police after noticing the mail piling up outside of a neighbor's house. Never ever a good sign. I get to check the welfare call and go with a backup car. No answer at the door, so we try to look through all the first floor windows when my partner spots a foot in the hallway. We forced entry and found the elderly female barely alive. She had fallen two days earlier and had a broken hip. Fire and rescue came and got her to the hospital in time. I know not the weirdest thing finding her. We had to grab all the prescription medicine we could find to take to the hospital. It was then that we found her mummified husband sitting in the bedroom chair. Coroner said he had been there for about six months. I've had two such jobs and oh lordy have I seen some things. Mostly gross, some kind of cool, some that will haunt me in no particular order. Hoarders of various degrees, these honestly blend together in my head. One lady in a decently nice apartment was hoarding plastic bottles for the five cent deposit, causing her place to become infested with roaches. The damage and pest control cost significantly more than she was making from the recycling. A little old lady who somehow attached her TV to the apartment complex's surveillance cameras and spent all day watching her neighbors. A fully functional pigeon coop in a spare room of a top floor unit. This one I try not to think about. There was an apartment designed for people with moderate to severe physical disabilities and low income. There were some war veterans and car crash survivors, but it was mostly old folks. On the ground floor was a room with an old woman in it. She spent all day in a hammock and looked kind of like the super old lady from Spongebob, and I say that with no humor. As far as I could tell, she was not conscious, though she could be spoon-fed, so she couldn't be comatose. Hanging in the air in her small, dark room were two Mylar birthday balloons. One said 101, the other said 102. As a pizza delivery driver, I wasn't required to go into anyone's house, at least on paper. In practice, though, it happens. If I were doing the same job now, I'd be much more wary of going into someone's house, but at 19, I thought I was invincible and didn't care. I have tons of pizza delivery stories from back then, some I've even told on Reddit before, but I've never told this one. There used to be this log cabin looking house right in the middle of town. It's since been demolished, but it was legitimately just a very large log cabin sitting in the middle of a city. It was probably 10 p.m. when I went out for the delivery. I looked at the address, looked at the wall map to see exactly where I was going the days before GPS, and realized it was the log cabin. I'd always noticed it, but had never visited it, nor did I know anything about it. So I was kind of exciting getting to see who actually lived in this place. I arrive and pull into the driveway for the first time. I noticed it had three separate doors, A, B, and C. I'll be damned, it's a triplex, I thought. The address was for Unit C. So I went to Unit C and knocked on the door. As soon as it opened, a wall of stink knocked me across my face. It smelled like, I don't know, 
a mixture of piss and unwashed crotch, a woman answered wearing nothing but a t-shirt and panties, which wasn't particularly strange for my town, but when she raised her arms, I could see her tits hanging at the bottom of the shirt. Let me impress upon you. These were not tits I was particularly keen on seeing. She was, I'll say, worse for wear, in the looks department, plus that stink. Jesus, it was insufferable. She turned around and said, I gotta go get my pocketbook. Will you set it on the counter? Extremely hesitant, I crossed the threshold and saw the counter right next to me. I set the pizza down. She came back out with the exact change and a copy of The Last of the Mohicans on VHS. She handed me the money and said, have you seen this? And plops the video in my hands. Uh, yeah, years ago, I say. Well, now you own it. That damn movie is so good. I stare at her and the tape for a moment and I'm like, I mean, if you like the movie, I don't want to take it from you. No, no, it's fine. I got like 50 copies of it. Right after she said that, I noticed her TV was on and no shit, Last of the Mohicans was playing. I remember clearly it was the scene where the guy was being burned alive. Okie dokie, thanks, I said and left. When I got back to work, I told my manager I just delivered a pizza to the log cabin in town and he looks at me and says, did she give you a copy of Last of the Mohicans? She did, I replied. Yeah, I got a copy from her too. Not particularly scary or anything, just weird. I never had a delivery for her again. I was 20 years old, working as an internet installer just over 10 years ago. A cute girl a little older than me ordered service, so while I was at her house surveying, both flirting, I told her I had to trace some lines down. It was a studio type, mother-in-law suite, she was renting behind a house and she was in college. Started tracing lines and had to look behind her bed. It was just a mountain of used tampons. She had been shoving them under and behind her bed. The rest of the house was relatively clean and lots and lots of hoarders. There are so many hoarders. It's my time to shine. I used to work as an installation technician for a popular satellite TV service. I saw everything you can think of. Naked people, lonely housewives, hoarders, drug addicts, filth you wouldn't believe, porn mongers, too much to list. My most unforgettable story was the time I went to a house out in the country, a little shitty looking from the outside, but I wouldn't judge customers based on that. I go to the front door, it's blocked off. I go around back, up some steps to the back porch. The customers welcome me in through the sliding glass door, which must be broken because it only opens about 10 inches. This guy and wife are sitting at the kitchen table with their three teenage daughters, all with lit cigarettes and clearly strung out or hung over. Again, not my life and I'm not one to judge. I do my normal bit that I'm required to, say, and then get to work putting a dish on their roof. I come back in and tell them I need to go into the basement to run the lines for their new boxes and this is where it gets fun. Oh, you don't want to do that, buddy, says Mr. Customer. Why not? Ten Piece Lips asked politely. It's really the only way I can route the cable where I need to. Because, says Mrs. Customer, our septic tank backed up into the basement. Fuck me, I think to myself, this is going to smell. But I really had no other option. Here's the thing. Their basement had a door to the outside that was frozen open. It was February and bitter cold. Their septic tank backed up and filled the basement with about a foot of shit, which then froze solid. I go into the basement and spend a good 30 minutes running cable over my head, balancing very carefully as I'm now basically ice skating on shit lake. And now it gets scary. When I'm nearly done in the basement, I realize I can hear them yelling upstairs. Not like a parent scolding a child. I hear multiple voices shouting at the top of their lungs. Keep your head down, I think to myself. Finish the job and get out of here. As I get back upstairs, I'm hit with a wave of noise. Every person in the house is yelling and I see that two people are being held back from each other. I duck into a room and start connecting boxes so I can get the fuck out. Apparently, one of the daughters had a boyfriend there, and they had a disagreement. He said something nasty to her, and then she told her mother, who confronted him. More words must have been had, because then it turns into a physical and violent altercation. It's at that moment, as this 40-year-old woman and teenage boy are being restrained and screaming at each other, that the mother yells, if the fucking cable guy wasn't here, I would kill you right the fuck now. All I can think at this point is that I need to get the fuck out of here. I don't want to watch a murder or have to deal with the police. I practically ran out of that place. No signatures, no follow-up with customer. I didn't get paid enough for that shit. To give an indication of how fucked up this job could be, on my very first job, 
basically shadowing another tech, dude's house was covered in dog shit and I saw his testicles. Okay, I've got one. I'm a locksmith and there was a foreclosed funeral home that I was re-keying. It was straight out of a bad horror movie in its creepiness. No power at all and barely any light. The basement was a hundred year old masonry with cadaver slabs and cremation furnace. Creepy all on its own. However, when the real estate agent and I were sweeping the building, we went to the second floor and there was a makeshift scarecrow with a shirt with a crude face smeared on it. There was also a bed sheet covered in blood, trash strewn about, a pile of cigarette butts, and a couple needles. Then we heard someone in the next room run across the floor. I called out, I'm just here to change the locks, and held a hammer. There was a pause, then the sound of a breaking window and them climbing out. We immediately left and called the police. The police arrived and swept the building and confirmed a squatter had indeed set up there but was gone. I then went back and started changing locks. After about 30 minutes, we heard the glass shuffle and two feet land on the floor. I called out again that we were still there and we left again, called the police back and they had me change the locks with an officer on site. A week later, the building was set on fire. I used to work as a sound system installer years ago right out of high school and the strangest thing to me was seeing wealth. I came from a home where we collected cans for quarters. I shared a room with two other family members and shopped for groceries at the Dollar Tree. I knew people were wealthy and there were rich people out there but I had no first hand experience. Job order came in, usual setup for audio for a TV room, no biggie. On the drive to the house, we entered what was like a royal district to me. Big lawns, big houses, stone walls with those statues on every other post, shiny polished cars and or trucks. That was the outside. Inside though, felt like I walked into some estate out of a movie. The husband was a lawyer, wife was a doctor, 60s I believe, and lived very well. It was one of those houses where there was a giant painting above a fireplace of the husband and wife with their two dogs. The sound system went into at the time, I guess I could be called a home movie theater. Husband loved old westerns and even kung fu films. I remember he had a Bruce Lee poster, I wanted when I saw it. Nice chairs, adjustable lighting, and the dude had a popcorn maker in the minibar area. Little enclosed environment for cigars and another for wine. Basement was like a classy game room, big billiards table, card table, pinball machine, and a tap. Pool out back and on top of it all, a mini library he said he set up just for his wife. The couple were extremely nice. One thing was strange was I expected the snooty look down stereotype but they were so nice. That's how I got to tour the house because the guy was like, hey bud, want to see something cool? And proceeded to blow my mind. Not the most strange or weird story I know, but it was weird to me to see that right in my own city there could be this level of wealth. It was like a culture shock. It took me a while to shake the feeling of like I jumped into another world and I will never forget it. Not that bad, I know, but to my poor young eyes, it was so weird. I'm an EMT, so I've seen lots of hoarders, human and animal waste, etc. But the most aggravating day was when my partner and I got fleas from this dude's house. Our ambulance was swarming with fleas. Her and I were covered in fleas. We could see them jumping around, there were so many. We had to mark out of service to decontaminate the truck and ourselves. It was awful and itchy. When I was a caregiver, I was absolutely flabbergasted when I walked into a home where there was a dog shit everywhere. No pads, no newspaper, etc. Just dog shit everywhere, of all kinds. Dried, fresh, broken into bits, whole pieces. There was a capable adult in the household who could have let the dog out. I had to bite my tongue every time I went there and was told to pick it up because I so badly wanted to go, what in the absolute fuck is wrong with you motherfuckers? How do you live like this when I'm not here? Here's a gross story, posted in a different question a while back. A few years ago when I was an apprentice, me and my qualified colleague, we'll call him Sam, and I were shadowing got sent to a bungalow belonging to an elderly resident to install an extractor fan in the end suite of his bedroom. The gentleman was going to be away on holiday during the install and had left a key in an outdoor wall safe so we could get in and do the work. Nice easy job. I went straight to the job in the morning so I could drill the 4 inch hole through the wall for the duct work. The apprentice always gets the lame jobs. Sam went to the wholesalers to get the parts and materials, then would meet me on site. It was the middle of summer in a heat wave. We wanted to get to the beer garden so we'd get done faster this way. However, it adds to the grossness. You'll see why. 
So, I pull up to the house, knock on the door, even though I know he's not been there three weeks at this point, force of habit, you never know, no answer. So I punch the code and get the key out of the wall safe. I put the key in the door and opened it. Instant gag reflex. The smell was so bad I'll never forget it. It was like a vomit smell almost. Very unique though. I put on my respiration mask from my bag, which I'd put on to drill brick anyway, and pushed on. I opened the door to the bedroom. Smells even worse. Jesus, what's this guy been doing in here? Kept gagging, but walked on. Then the worst part. I opened the door to the bathroom, instantly vomiting in my mask. My legs turned to jelly, my stomach doing cartwheels. The gentleman was in the bath, dead. He'd obviously been there a long time, three weeks at least. I dropped my tools and ran outside. I took off my mask and wiped my face. Shaking and sweating horribly, I had to sit down. It took me a few minutes, but I rang the police. They didn't seem phased, which surprised me, but I suppose they've heard it all. Lit a cigarette and rang Sam while waiting and told him what had happened. He knew I wasn't joking as my voice was so rattled, he later told me. He arrived a couple of minutes later and was actually very comforting, which is a rare thing with the British building trade. It usually all banter and piss taking. I don't blame him for not going inside. A few more minutes later, the police arrived. I was still in the same place I sat down when I'd come out of the building. I could not get up. I was almost frozen in fear. One of the policemen was very sympathetic and helped me up. I gave a statement and they gave me a lift home. It will haunt me for the rest of my life. EMT, but this is from a colleague of mine. He and his partner show up to the scene of a frequent flyer. The caller and old lady who is lonely and often called just to talk. Well, this time they show up walk in and she's super distressed. Asked what's wrong, she says her cat, Mr. Skittles, died earlier that day. They say they're so sorry that happened. She says, look, walks over to the freezer and pulls out Mr. Skittle, frozen into a block of ice. My friend says that had just been there the other day and the cat hadn't seen him sick then. Ooh, this one is right up my alley. I worked as an APS investigator for a little bit, Adult Protective Services which required us to make unannounced visits to people's homes. One home in particular was by far in the worst condition I've ever seen. Let's start with the driveway, a long winding driveway that comes to an old dilapidated house. This house is a huge two-story home in the middle of nowhere. I'm new at this time and I have another caseworker with me. The porch is littered with trash and cats. We knock on the door and a tall, lanky older man answers. We state why we are there and he allows us inside. Well, on the porch, that is. You see, where the floor would normally be, a wooden sheet of thin wood covered a huge hole that went to the dirt below. Picture a porch with literally no floor. He beckons us inside. My coworker is a larger girl and asks me if I'm comfortable going in by myself. I'm not yet, but I have no choice. I walk in and it only gets worse. The kitchen has no power. Dog shit everywhere. Dishes, trash, you make it all over the counters and floor. I turn to the right and I'm greeted by an open doorway with a nude old woman covering her crotch with a blanket. I have to step over a bunch of cords, animals, and everything. The smell is cutting through my mask. I have to talk to her and get her to see that she can't keep living like this. To the left of her is a giant hole in the wall where her dogs walk in and out. It leads outside. Above her is a human-sized hole in the roof where the sun is pouring in. They inform me that they have no power in the back of the house, but in the front they do, which is why they have so many extension cords everywhere. None of them work. The floor was littered with trash, bugs, animal feces. I tried my best to get her to see her ways, but it was all in vain. The small town where they live doesn't condemn houses. We had a meeting with attorneys, our supervisor, and boss. Ultimately, they had the right to live there, even if it was hazardous to their health. Was this my worst case? By far no, but it was a pretty bad case nonetheless. Not me, but my significant other. Significant other used to work for Comcast as an installer and electrician many years ago. He has lots of odd, funny, alarming stories. My favorite is when he was in the basement of an old house running some wires. He couldn't find the pull for the light, so he was using a small flashlight to look around. So he's looking around and catches eyes in the dark with his flashlight goes back and realizes there's many eyes watching him in the dark. 
As soon as he realizes, he gets creeped out and starts to head for the stairs. Then something starts screaming, which makes him scream. Then the homeowner comes down, turns on the lights and apologizes for not telling him about the herd of goats that live in the dark basement. Apparently they are easily startled. He said there were probably a dozen of them down there. 